So what we're going to reporting on today, Popsal and Dipan's 2021 coaster has a temporary name, it also has a confirmed theme, and it also has a confirmed budget. <laughs> Hello there guys, my name is Coach Chai Yuchi Chai Doncaster Born, Bob Bill for Theme Park News and welcome to a Theme Park News Room Update from Plops Orlando Pan. Now before we get started, I'm wearing a coat because even though it's sunny outside, it is absolutely freezing. So I didn't bother to take it off and you know what, I'm going to take it off right now because I've got this nice Jack Jones t-shirt on and I'm going to be taking it off now. In fact, no, I'm going to time this right, so I'm going to go through the seven shout-outs for this video. If you want a shout-out, comment down below if you want a shout-out, and I'll put it in the next video. Or, if you comment down below your thoughts on the videos now, on the videos that we've uploaded the day before, you can get your shout-out on the next day of uploads. So, basically, these shout-outs, these seven shout-outs are people who request a shout-out and comment down below their thoughts on yesterday's videos from the York Maze Hello Tween vlog, and of course, the news update on Sesame Place San Diego. So big shout outs go to Brian Galeas, Theme Park Life, Benjamin Romberg, Julian Hudson, Harrison Schneider, uh, Falco Flyer, and David Banks. Boom! Did it all in one. Good shot on the chair. Now before we get started as well, we've got some more videos coming over the next few days. We've got construction updates from Flamingoland to Tanlooping Roller Coaster, Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. We've also got plenty of news updates to come over the next few weeks as we head into the 2020 season. We get closer and closer to the closed season of 2019. We also um, have individual walkthroughs of the York Maze Hollow Tween Mazes, Corny's Corneval, The Singularity and Barnageddon 3D. They're going to be uploaded. Uh, they've all been compiled together. They're going to be uploaded over the next couple of days as well. So make sure you stay tuned for all of that. And now let's zoom into this video from Plopsland of Pam. So this is a new Mac Extreme spinning coaster we've reported on in the past. We've covered this, co this new coaster for 2021 from the literal start. We have had updates. We've, had, we've, we've, had, we've done a few updates on now. This is like the fourth or fifth update on it now. Um, the first update was the rumour of this coaster happening in the first place. Then we got the confirmation of the coaster along with other projects such as the Popsa Hotel for next year as well as the completion of the Dino Splash refurbishment, the kids area themed to Bumba for 2022 and the Popsa camping site for 2023. We also did a video, uh, the latest one, uh, the latest update on the completion of the actual layout being fully revealed. Uh, for the coaster, including a loop and a so-called cobra roll over the pond area. And we've got the location of where this coaster is going. So, before we get onto the details that we saw via a Belgian article during an interview with the CEO of Plopsa, let's take you through what we know already. So this is going to be a Mac Extreme spinning roller coaster, including two, in two launches, a loop, a so-called cobra roll inversion. We also have uh, the, the station, which is going to be located next to the descent of Super Splash, and um, in between, the, and it's look, basically it's going to be located in between Super Splash and the Plops and the Plop Garden, uh, known as Ween apparently, uh, but it's translated as the Plop Garden. So it's in between them. The station is next to the descent of the sp Super Splash uh, descent. Uh, so it's next to there, basically the station. Um, and we've got some rumored name on the document known as Robo Spin. I'm going to get onto that by the article that was released uh, recently about this new details that we report today. Uh, and I'm going to go on about that name a little bit later. Uh, we also got the uh, rumoured height and sort of stuff like that. So if you want to check out the rumoured details and stuff like that, check out that video, that update. It's going to be on our, Pop our Studio 100 Parks playlist. You'll see we've refurbished that Pops Lander Pan playlist into a whole Studio 100 Parks playlist. So we've got all the Pops of Parks on there. Pops of Coo. Holiday Park's in there as well, Marjolan Kaunati, we reported on the brand new Marjolan Vorsaw theme park, uh, all those videos for Studio 100 Parks, new and current parks, are all in that playlist, the refurbished Pops Under Pan playlist, and all the updates from this will be on a separate playlist uh, come next year, because uh, the way we're going to do it is basically 20, 20 new attractions are going to have their own playlist all throughout this season and next season. Then, when the, those attractions have opened, we'll keep the playlist on for a month, and then we're just going to 
just keep them with the other Bush Garden stuff. And we're actually going to introduce some new individual playlists for 2021 attractions, the top five. Kind of what we've done with 2020, we've got like five uh, individual playlists for 2020. And then we're going to do a 2021 one where it's individual playlists again. I think that's how we're going to run it. So double, so stay tuned in case we run it differently. Um, so yeah, we had all those details in the previous video. Now we have three massive, de well technically four massive details uh, in this video. So, via this Belgian article, I'm going to put it in the description down below so you can have a look at the article yourself uh, during an interview. Uh, basically, four key points to take out of this is the theme will be futuristic with robots and slash or avatars. It will not have a Studio 100 theme like many other attractions in the park. It will also have the temporary name, the temporary name, Robo Spinner, and the whole project will cost 15 million euros. A lot of questions and a lot of answers to sort of get through in this video, uh, so I'm going to go through all that now. So starting with the 15 million euro budget. Now, there's going to be a lot of people commenting down below saying, why is it just 15 million when Time Traveler was 20 odd million dollars? Well, Time Traveler was built on like a hillside with those kind of hillside construction and having to uh, dig deep in places with the ground Groundwork Foundation. Um, by, by the way, if you didn't know what time travel is, that's the prototype extreme spinning coaster that opened over in Silver Dollar City in 2018. So unless Europa Park are planning to open one of these in 2021, which I don't think will be the case, I think, well, it's pretty much confirmed that this will be Europe's first extreme spinning roller coaster. So, basically, uh, that was the prototype, and this one, um, that one cost about $20 million. Uh, around that mark or just over 20 million dollars and that's because of the hillside construction how it was foundated uh, foundated how it was set and how it was landscaped so that's why it's more expensive than this one this one's on flat land this one's being built on flat land so it's easier to construct which means it's less budget to put into the construction of the coaster that's the sort of whole reasoning behind this um now, sort of talking about the t the temporary name of Robo Spinner. Now, I said in the last video, it's one of those names you have to get used to. It doesn't sound great at first, but you'll get used to it, and it sounds all right when you get used to it. I'm so glad this is going to be the temporary name for the ride. I'd love to see a permanent name for the attraction um, very, very soon, hopefully. Um, hopefully. I think it'll be around about the summertime next year we'll get the announcement. If not, very, very soon. Uh, because I do think that they could time their announcements at any point. They could announce it at the start of next year. They could announce it in the summer of next year. They could announce it this time next year. They could announce it in 2021. They could announce it in January two years from now. So it's one of those things where you sort of have to wait and see what's going to happen with this. So uh, I am excited to see what the actual name's going to be. And that leads me into one of the things that I'm most looking forward to about this coaster. And that is theme and storyline. Now, this coaster needs a storyline. You need to keep up with your competitors. Look at the queue line for Pulsar at Wallaby Belgium, one of the Belgian rival parks uh, for the Wallaby chain. You look at Pulsar and you sort of think, well, that's got a very impulse hotline monitor type queue line uh, and logo design, the whole station design with that whole beep, beep, beep as a sort of the, I think there was like a beep sound effect, like the hotline sound effect when uh, the turntable switches over and the new riders are getting ready to take on the challenge of Pulsar. Um, so there's a real optimism here and a real potential for Popsign to really theme this ride up. Now, like I said in past updates on this coaster, I, I'm going to try, I won't promise anything yet because it's two years from now, but I want to try my absolute best to get a, a double Belgium trip in on the opening day for this coaster. I think the main reason for, for going to Belgium in two years time, or one of the main reasons I want to go to Belgium in two years time, is to try and get the opening date for the Popsaline coaster, and maybe try and get the opening day or just ride it at some point, the Intamin Mega opening at Wolby Belgium, because both of them are really good coasters, but I think Depending on when they both open, it will be either one opening day, hopefully, if all goes through, fingers crossed. Uh, so if I am doing a Belgian mega trip in two years' time, then I would like to get at least one of the opening days in. So if it's, it depends which one opens in the summer. If none of them open in the summer, then I'll just, then I'll just go to the park and just try them out when they're open. If one of the opening days is in the summer, when I'm free then I will definitely try and get out there for that date, for that coaster, and then do the other one maybe before or after. De again, depending on when they open. I might just get one park in, and then the other one might open two, two months afterwards, and I might go back to Belgium and try that park as well. So, again, it's just one of those things where you just got to... 
you've got to hope that timing and schedule is on your side and flights of course uh, so a Belgian mega trip is in my mind for planning for two years time because uh, I want to get at least one of these coasters opening days in the, if there are opening in the summer because of course you've got Pop Sun with their coaster, Wolby Belgium with their coaster and if Bobbage Online is doing anything in 2021 then fair enough um, so going back to sort of theme and storyline here I was sort of mentioning how Pulsar had that really good theme queue line the whole atmosphere now with this new coaster, with it having this futuristic theme, this robots and or avatars, could be a hint, I want to see some Pandora World of Avatar vibes. I know Popside could do really cool stuff. You see the concept arts for the kids area, um, with the Bumba themed kids area for 2022, with the dart ride, the family attractions, no family coaster in those plans now, so I'm guessing that's been scrapped how we talked about in that video, make sure you go and check it out. Um, I'm really curious to see how they're going to do with a non-Studio 100 theme and how they can theme it really well because I really want to see a good storyline here. And I think with the temporary name of Robo Spinner, I think the name will really suit a potential storyline for the coaster and make it a real detailed experience and put it up there as one of the best themed coaster experiences in Europe and possibly even around the world. It could be, I think the goal with this one is to make it even better themed than Time Traveller. And that's a very detailed theme coaster. And if you're ever part decide to get one the same year, you have to try and make it as just as good, if not better, themed than Europa Parks. And Europa Park, they can do theming incredibly well. And Time Traveler is really well detailed and really well themed. So if they're going to try and theme it better than both of them, if Europa Park get one as well, then there's a real challenge here for Pops on Japan. Now, we spoke about the temporary name, we spoke about the budget, we spoke about the theme. What about overall thoughts? This is, could be one of the biggest coasters of Europe in 2021. Right up there with the Mega at Wolby Belgium, right up there with the b and Invert at Groenland, which I really want to try when it opens in two years' time. I uh, can't wait to see a name for that. It's got like, it's got like a project name called Blue Harvest, uh, and I'm really excited for that. We did a construction update early on in the channel's history, and uh, we spoke about the uh, groundwork taking place. Uh, for the opening of this coaster in two years, so uh, hopefully we'll try and get some more updates in 2020 on this project As well as all the other ones um, But yeah in terms of Europe, they're the three big ones Obviously like I said Europa Park could be conjure conjuring up something possibly for 2021 Maybe 2022, I think that's probably the most likely point at this point Likely situation at this point um, So in terms of Europe, unless anything else big gets announced I'm thinking that uh, Popsaland, uh, Gronalund and Walby Belgium are, th are the three big investments going into Europe back in, in, in 2021. Like I said, things can change from now till 2021. Other things can be announced, other coasters can be uh, unveiled in Europe. Um, so it might not just be those three parks, but for now it's those three parks. And this is going to be one of those videos where I'll look at it in a year's time and think, wow, you know, was, was there only three massive investments pretty much fully confirmed uh, for 2021 at that point, and now we've got six, seven, eight, <laughs> probably not, but um, I'm, I'm predicting about six or seven big investments in Europe, but I'm not, I'm not sure where the other one's going to go, but I know that Europe Park going to get one of them, obviously, uh, maybe, but Plopsaland, um, Wolby Belgium, and uh, Grona Lund are going to be the three at the minute that are investing in something big. Um, so I think Plopsan really need to stand out from the rest of the crowd and really put the detail in. Again, going back to Wallaby, obviously Wallaby Belgium is one of the uh, local competitors with Plopsan because they're in the same country. But you look at Wallaby Holland and you look at Lost Gravity, that's not really a futuristic theme for that Matt Big Dipper at the Holland Park. But you look at how they did that theme and how gravity has been turned upside down, Lost Gravity, that whole theme the whole soundtrack for it, uh, you look at how well detailed they did that theme, they did like an escalator that doesn't work, you sort of climb up there as part of the queue line, they've really gone all in with that coaster and really created a detailed uh, queue line experience for Lost Gravity, that's the kind of thing I want and the same with Pulsar, the same with other European coasters, I want a really good queue line experience and a real detailed storied roller coaster for this park, so I think this is real potential here. This could be a real potential to do something special with this coaster. So there we go then. So that is Plop Sunday Pounds 2021 coaster details. Like I said, we've got full walkthroughs of the Halo Tween mazes to come over the next couple of days. We've got construction updates from Pantheon and the Tenlubin coaster from Ingerland to come as well. So make sure you stay tuned 
for all of that, plus much, much more. And for now, guys, make sure you like if you've loved it. Comment down below your thoughts. And if you want any shout-outs as well via those thoughts, or if you just want a shout-out, then that'll come in the next video uh, uh, the next day. Subscribe to the channel if you've loved this video as well. Click the notification bell so you never miss any more thrilling news updates, because this is the theme park news channel after all. And for now, guys, my name is Coast Chow. Keep living the coast of life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care. Have an awesome day, my friends.